wintering. If I close my eyes, I can picture him flitting the hedgerow for splints, or a rib of wood to kindle the fire, or reading the snow for whatever it was that came out of the trees and circled the house in the night. If I listen, I can hear him out in the kitchen, scudding potatoes, calling the cat in. If I breathe, I can smell the ghost of a fire, a burning of leaves that would fizz in the mizzle before snow. There is in this house now a stillness of cat fur and boxes, of photographs, paper bags, waste paper baskets, a lifetime of things that I've come here to winter or to burn. There is in this world one snowfall. Everything else is just weather. This next poem was written for somebody I worked with who had to retire through serious ill health. And I was asked to mark the event with a poem. And the poem I wrote was set on a farm at the end of the day with the farmhand coming off the field, wondering if they've achieved enough. The Fielder. The day is late, later than the sun. He tastes the dusk of things and eases down and feels the shade set in across the yard. He never thought there'd be so much undone, so much in need of planing. The half and moan with its fist of bracken, the splinting of the cattle bar, the half-attended paddock wall, scribbled with blackthorn and broke wool. Perhaps he could have turned the plough for one last till, be sure or surer of where the seeding fell. But then it's not the ply that counts, but the depth of furrow, knowing the take was deep and real, knowing the change was made. And field by field, the brown hills harvest yellow, and few of us will touch the landscape in that way. This poem was written on the birth of my cousin's daughter. And let us say that if the linen flapped too loud, the washing line was taken down. And if a shop door bell was rung, its tongue was held with cotton thumbs. And if a milk float tattled by, it was flagged down and held aside. And should the rivers drown us out, we had them dammed at every mouth and coughed our engines gently off and wrapped our tires in woollen socks, and sat a while on silent roads, or dawdled home in slippered shoes, and did not sound but held our tongues, and watched our watches stop and startle on. A friend of mine worked as a housing officer in the Midlands, and once she told me a story of a tenant she visited, whose house was filled with unopened bottles of milk everywhere. And at first I thought this must be a beautiful image, but of course there was a much sadder story behind that. This was a young man living in the house that his parents had been in and died in, and he'd been unable to cancel the milk. And it seemed to me a message and an idea about seeing things as they actually are and not romancing the point. The Sour House. Through the frost hole of the passenger window, your tenant's house is ringed in winter. He's turning the snow from the path that lay in the night. He can far less handle a spade than you, dipping the lug as though the shovel itself was unbalanced. And what you found inside, you would not forget. Room on room of bottled milk, gagging the stairwell, the hallway, bookshelves like a stumbled on ice world, a sweep of winter. For years, he maintained the world his parents left, taking in milk he never drank. Evenings spent out in the yard, piecing apart the ford his father drove. Sill lines, cogwheels, dippers fanned round him, 
working each touch to a burr. For years, I coloured your world in hues you didn't recognise. Never your island, always your scary, unable to see the romance of the thing for the thing itself. That, airing his house, the rancour would catch as far as the common, and what you found in the garage was scrap, not the showpiece I'd imagined, but the pin pulled out, a car returned to the sum of its parts. Driving now, through the clus at dusk, I am struck by the things I can't let go, that some things wheel on the body like braille. The sight of you, just home from the milk house, matted and choking, your raw nose streaming, gutting the fridge in two clean strokes, like a swimmer striking out for land.